Hey everybody, it's Jay here with Bicycle Motorsports, and this video is a um, it's a follow up. It's um, follow up to one of the first videos I made for my channel, which was titled "Motorized Bicycle Upgrades." Um, so this is uh, like a part two. And by contrast, if you've already seen that video, um, at first glance you can see that there's uh, quite a few changes as opposed to the way the bike was in that video. Um, one thing uh, that I want to start off with that was actually on the bike before, but I just failed to mention it, were the uh, Avid BB5 uh, disc brake assembly that you see right here. Better view right there. It, this is a much better quality uh, disc brake assembly than the one that came with the bike. Or what came with the bike originally was what you see right here. Just really poor quality. Uh, the pads on the inside were just junk. And when uh, this thing started squeaking really loudly, I thought I should go in and get replacement pads. And at the time, I didn't know that they don't even make pads for this. Uh, they, at least not that I know of. And the bike shop I went to, they didn't even know what to make of it. If you look really closely, you can see that this right here, this is how you adjust the pad and also access it to uh, change it. It's uh, really beat up and scored. It's held on there, strangely, by a magnet. Um, like I said, at the shop, they don't sell anything like that. And uh, another thing that I would guess is that this whole um, caliper assembly is made out of some sort of uh, zinc alloy pot metal. Um, I mean, I'm sure with enough time and braking that parts of this would just snap right off. Um, this is very cheap, so I highly recommend to uh, anybody out there that's doing high speeds on these bikes to definitely change the uh, brake assembly. Um, get rid of these. Next, I want to uh, show you the gas cap. Um, you can see it's got one of these little vents, these vent tubes on there. A lot of other people put them on there. For me, it was a kind of a necessity. It wasn't just for looks or anything like that. When I first got the bike, there was uh, a lot of times there would be a vacuum uh, that was created. Anytime a little bit of air actually found its way through the cap, the carburetor would flood and there'd be fuel all over the place. And, you know, that's a safety hazard. So uh, I went and uh, put one of these on here. Um, slides right off. And I put it on so there is airflow that goes all the way through the cap and into the tank. And I don't have to worry about any uh, leaks or anything like that. Uh, something of my own creation that I thought up after a while to keep fuel from leaking outside of the cap, which I'm sure many of you with these frames are very well familiar with, is the leaking factor. Um, so what I went ahead and did was I went and got some uh, eighth inch thick nitrile uh, rubber. I cut that to size and the right diameter and put that into the cap to keep it from leaking. And uh, I went an extra step and made a parabolic splash guard. And you can see that right here. And like I said, uh, there is airflow that goes all the way from here to uh, here. So um, yeah, it works really well. Uh, this is the exact diameter of this hole. So fuel is not splashing out of here. Uh, it's just uh, makes things easier. It's just uh, it's a it's a good thing to make sure that you just keep that fuel from leaking. Next is the uh, MZ65 expansion chamber. It goes by a few different names uh, depending on who you're purchasing it from, but uh, I know it as the MZ65 expansion chamber. Um, I've had it for a while. In the beginning, I really didn't use it that much just because of how loud it is. Um, at times, it can be deafening uh, if you're riding the bike long enough. Uh, when you get home, your ears are just ringing. The setup that I have now, it's, it's, it would be kind of a sin not to use it because uh, I'm using a new carburetor, which I'll go over next. And, uh, you know, you want to try and get the most power you can and have everything work together cohesively. One thing I do to combat the incredibly loud noise that comes out of this pipe is uh, I just wear earplugs when I ride. I do have a silencer that I'm going to mount on here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, these expansion chambers have a stinger that is angled outward. It, I guess I guess you could say it's like a 20 degree angle. 
And uh, if you were to put a silencer on here, then the silencer is sticking out. It just kind of looks weird. It probably gets in the way of your foot and your leg when you're paddling. So I'm going to modify the stinger and try and straighten this out just so I can get the uh, silencer on. And I actually have that right here. It's uh, this one right here. Um, it does have a flange adapter that goes right here on the flange. And uh, it fits perfectly over the stinger. Um, it, this is 22 millimeters outside diameter, if I'm remembering correctly. So yeah, it does fit. It's just a matter of, uh, straightening out the stinger because I really don't want to be riding it with this thing sticking out like that. So, um, that'll be another video, uh, an upgrade that I hope to do, um, in the near future. Okay. So next, uh, this upgrade is my favorite upgrade on the bike. And what I have here is the Makuni VM18 carburetor. And it's just, it's an amazing carburetor. It's really well built. And by comparison to the NT carburetor that I had on here before, uh, the performance is like night and day. Uh, you cannot go wrong with upgrading to a better carburetor if you really want to take this seriously and just maximize your power. The, the power is just amazing all the way from the low uh, low range to high range, um, and I'm also using that alongside the uh, OZ reed valve here. I also have a um, a different uh, cylinder. This is a fully ported and polished cylinder. This has a third transfer port. I polished all the ports myself, and uh, I had to do that because they don't come polished, um, at least for, from the company I bought it from. Um, I'll do another video on how to go about polishing the uh, ports on your cylinder. It's really easy and you can get like a mirror finish. And uh, it's important because you want airflow to have the least amount of uh, friction, the molecules of air to have the least amount of friction in these ports when they're when you're trying to, you know, um, have good airflow. And another thing I have is the Molossi right angle air filter and it fits perfectly. Uh, it's 32 millimeter, I think, and it fits perfectly on the carburetor and leaves just enough space between the seat tube and the filter itself. I think it's about a quarter inch of space. So, like I said, uh, with this setup, performance is amazing. Uh, acceleration is much better than it was with the old carburetor. And like I said, that was the NT carburetor. So um, I, I definitely recommend you know these upgrades if you really want to get higher speeds, more power, uh, just better torque, you know, try to make these upgrades. One thing I almost forgot to mention was the piston in here is a uh, high pin piston, but it's windowed. So if you're going to be running a reed valve set up and uh, you have the fully ported cylinder, you definitely want to have a windowed piston for everything to work correctly. So, uh, yeah, I almost forgot to mention that, but um, this motor is not the same motor that was on here before. The old motor was a PK80. This is a Zeta 80 motor. It's uh, built really solid. Uh, it has a good weight to it. When you pick it up, you can just feel that it has a much better quality than some other motors out there. Um, especially um, some of those motors people buy on eBay. Uh, they're just uh, subpar. There is a difference between... Uh, this motor and ones that you get on eBay and one of the things you can look for when you're looking at the pictures of the motor online is the size of the studs if you look closely this motor has m8 studs and the in my opinion the studs are indicative of the quality of the motor and other aspects of the motor a lot of those motors you get on eBay have m6 studs and with the torque and all the power that goes into them, they have the potential to just shear right off. So when you're looking for a motor, just uh, take a good look at the pictures they post and make sure that it has a uh, M8 stud versus an M6 stud. And it's really obvious when you look at the picture. You can tell which one's which. As you can see, I'm still utilizing the NGK CDI box. really wanted to upgrade to a Jaguar CDI box. I've heard great things about them. Unfortunately... Uh, any website I've uh, gone on to purchase, they all say uh, sold out or not in stock. So uh, I just haven't had any luck finding one that I can actually purchase. So if any of you guys out there 
happen to come across one or come across a seller who is actually selling them and has stock, um, please leave a comment in the comment box and let me know because I definitely want to upgrade to one of those. Another thing that I want to recommend uh, everyone get if you have one of these frames, and I actually had it on here before, but I, I just uh, forgot to mention it, but if I already did, I'll mention it again. And that is these rubber uh, cushions right here for the pedestal mount. Um, they are uh, really great in the fact that they lessen the vibrations. And another thing is that they keep the vibrations from working at these welds. And I know of a specific instance where uh, somebody that I uh, used to ride around with periodically, he uh, one day was riding and the pedestal mount just sheared right off. So uh, I think one way you can go about mitigating the potential for that to happen is to just make sure you have something in here to lessen the vibrations. Lastly, another upgrade that I have is the um, OZ Magneto. Just give me a second while I remove one of these bolts. Just by looking at it, you can tell it's a lot beefier. Um, it's hard for me to speak to its performance just because I have so many other performance upgrades on here. Um, it would be hard for me to you know, say how it factors in. But um, just by the look of it, you can tell um, it's just bigger. I'd like to think that it helps, so I just put it on there. Um, I don't see how it hurts. For now, that's it. If you guys found the video helpful or informative, please like and subscribe. All right, thanks.